Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. What is up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show presented by TLR Coatings. We are here in studio flying solo. Justin's out sick. We are wrapping up the High Point National. So this show will probably be a little shorter than normal because, let's face it, I'm just talking about myself. I have no one to talk shit to. So here we are. Let's jump into this. Um, so first off, make sure to follow us on Facebook. I know we've been talking about this and we haven't done anything yet. But at some point, me and Justin are going to get together, watch one of these races, and we're going to live stream uh our thoughts for watching one of these races so like i said make sure to get us on facebook there and um that's where we'll be live streaming it um maybe next week maybe the week after who knows we don't have good enough service otherwise i'd live stream when we were at redbud but like i said we don't have good enough service down there usually so i don't think that's going to happen uh, also, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel already. Um, the subscriber count is growing, which is awesome. We're getting back up there, so we're only uh, 340 subscribers away to when we can monetize the channel again, which will definitely help us out because then we can upgrade the studio. Maybe get some new posters back here. Who knows? um get a new camera maybe we'll shoot in 4k and then you can see how ugly we really are you never know um but anyway uh also make sure to follow me on instagram uh it's moto season a lot of moto stuff going down so i post down there and then as far as the rest of it goes i'm not going to go through this again every week i keep doing it every week but you know you guys know there's links down below to all sorts of ways to support us um so make sure to click in some of those and help us out that way uh, so before we jump into the actual motos themselves and start talking about that, uh, let's cover a little bit of the track, which there's not really a lot to cover. It was the same as last year. Um, and, it, uh, died. and as far as the, um, as far as it goes, I mean, we're back on the East Coast. They ripped it deep. There's no more of this freaking... You know, we're not ripping it that deep. It's not going to be that gnarly stuff like they were doing on the West Coast. It was deep. It was tacky. It was gnarly yesterday at High Point. And that's the way I think that the East Coast is going to be here. So we're going to do that. Um, now, we already kind of covered it last week. But for anyone who didn't watch the Q&A show last week, which I will link up here. Um, Osborne is out. He um, sustained a shoulder injury at Thunder Valley. Basically popped his shoulder out in that first turn crash. And when he popped it back in, screwed up his shoulder. So he is out. A um, couple other news and notes not pertaining, news not pertaining to the AMA. Hurlings breaks his collarbone during a practice this week, or a practice crash this week, and is out. Now, he had a 62-point lead coming into the Italy race this weekend that they did. Um, as of the filming of this, he didn't make that race. Um, I know Cairoli won. I'm not sure if he went 1-1. He probably did. I'm just going to assume he did. So now he's down to, uh, down to a 12-point lead um, is what it'll be. Uh, I still think he's got a pretty good handle on that, winning that title. Um, the only sad thing is, is now instead of, you know, having this big points lead, have the points lead smaller and tighter, chances of us seeing him here uh, for a national are pretty slim. Um, when he had such a big lead, I thought, oh, we might see him at Unadilla because he'll pretty much have the title wrapped up by then. But barring Cairoli getting hurt here, he's not going to wrap the title up that early. So, whatever. Um, we'll still see him at Nations, which will be awesome. Um, now, one more thing, and this happened a few weeks ago, and I didn't really say anything about it, cover it, whatever. Um, let's talk about this Fox Supreme deal, okay? So I know there's a lot of you out there that absolutely hated, hated this idea of Supreme and Fox teaming up. Um, here's the deal. It's, it's not bad. It's good. It's actually great for the sport. Anytime you can put 
anything from the sport in the limelight is is great. I mean, you've got these rappers are wearing this stuff, and yes, do they look ridiculous? Absolutely, they look ridiculous. Um, you've got you know all, all these other people at these basketball games and stuff wearing this Supreme stuff, and it, 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 uh, yeah, I'll give it to you that they, they look stupid in it. Okay, but the fact that it's out there with the technology we have today, with the search engines we have today, with the internet and YouTube, and you can go type it in, and they can see dirt bike stuff if they type this stuff in. I mean, it, there's no bad way about it. This is a great marketing ploy by Fox, and if you don't like it, then you are a moron that lives in a tiny little shell in a cave. So, it was a good idea. It seems to have worked because we got tons of press everywhere. So get over it. If you don't like it, that is why the sport doesn't grow. You are the problem. And that's the rant of the day. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much all I had there. So uh, we'll ask Justin about that Supreme deal next week. I'm sure he'll text me after he sees this. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump into the 450s, which actually race first this week. Okay, 450s. So the 450s went first this week. We were on the big NBC channel, so that's why they got to go first. Um, 450 Moto 1, huge first turn pileup. Um, somebody got a little squirrely inside of Kenny. Kenny had a pretty decent start going, um, and it was pretty much a domino effect. Kenny into Baggett, into Pike, into Phil, and they're all down in the first corner. And holy crap, let's let the games begin. So um, I've been watching the first moto. I was watching the ticker at the top a lot. Um, Kenny worked his way through pretty well up to about 8th, ninth place. Uh, at that point, Baggett was working right through with him. Baggett got by him. Baggett continued to go. Um, and Kenny kind of stalled out in about 7th, 8th place. Uh, and ended up getting 7th in that first moto. Um, now at the front, you had Tomac whole shots the race and we all thought oh boy here we go the perfect season's going to continue on he's going to get two more he's going to have eight wins um on the season uh but wasn't so much the case marv was on it all day uh marv tracked him down that first moto there made the pass and as eli said in the press conference marv was just better like plain and simply was just better um so it you know pretty much it was kind of what a lot of us expected was Marv was going to do well here. High Point is considered more of a Euro GP type track, and uh, and Marv did what he did what we thought he was going to do. Tracked him down that first moto, got the win. Eli got second, and away we went into Moto Two. Um, moto Two, uh, kind of the same thing except for we didn't have the big first turn crash. Um, but again, Eli kind of whole shots. Kenny's right up there, and Marv is right up there also. Uh, Barsha's up there, and then Barsha, I guess, made contact with someone and screwed up his front brake, so he rode most of that second moto with no front brake and ends up going 3-5 for third overall on the day. Um, Kenny ends up riding a pretty solid moto, but after, I don't know, maybe like 10-ish minutes, loses touch with Marv and Eli, and they run away from him. Um, but we did learn yesterday that Kenny's kind of dealing um, with some arthritis in one of his arms uh, from his injuries. And he's going to get an MRI this week, I guess, to get that looked at. But it's not a good situation. Uh, definitely affects your grip and your riding style even more so than the injuries themselves that he's had. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what comes of that. Um, now in the second moto, you have Eli. He's out front the whole moto. Um, Marv is just kind of staying with him, marking him, last two laps, the battle's on. Um, and you have Marv making moves, trying to get Eli, um, it didn't really work, and the last lap was just an epic, epic battle. If you haven't seen it, go online, check it out, um, on YouTube somewhere, I'm sure it's there. If not, get the NBC Gold app and watch the moto back. It was, uh, it was an epic, epic battle, um, which definitely will go down as, one of the great battles of uh, you know of racing. You'll definitely be able to find it for years to come. 
Um, so anyway, so Eli goes 2-1 for first overall. Marv goes 1-2 for second overall. So the points stay the same. Eli's still got a 28-point lead, uh, which is more than comfortable for him at this point. Um, next week could be a lot of the same. And then you go to Southwick, which Eli's really, really good at. So probably a 1-1 performance. Um, and then you go to Redbud, which again, Eli's super duper good at. So another 1-1 performance. So he could have... If he splits with Marv again next week at Muddy Creek and then 1-1-1-1, one, 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 uh, that's a 12, point, 12 more points. So he could be knocking on 50 points here by about middle of the season um, and just be solidly in control here and maintaining. So um, now I, I know I ran my mouth a lot about Kenny would come out at high point after a week off and get a win. Now they did, um, they changed suspension. He was running... They changed from like KYB to Showa or vice versa um, over the break. I guess he didn't like what was happening and Honda can switch back and forth. Um, so I don't really know what's going on with that. I'm not really making excuses. I thought he was going to come out and do better than what he had been doing, but he didn't. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I'm, I'm still fairly impressed because uh, no one really thought he was going to do what he's been doing here as far as running top three podiums um until a lot later in the year like we all kind of figured it would be after the midway point before we even saw him start sniffing this stuff so the fact that he's actually doing it right now and has been doing it ever since round two is is actually pretty impressive um and and again i think with i think with ken it's a lot like we've been talking about he just needs to make it through the season healthy whether he's getting fifth whether he's getting seventh as long as he's as far as as far as in my opinion as long as he's in the top 10 we're golden we're golden. Just make it through. Be in the top 10. Finish the whole season. Get yourself a good off season going here so that you can come into Supercross healthy. And then I think we'll see definitely a, a better Kenny next year. Um, but we'll see. Who knows? The year is still young. He, he could still get wins this year. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, but if he doesn't, that's not going to be a huge surprise to me either, to be real honest. I'm, I'm just kind of waffling in the middle of it at this point because I'm hoping he gets wins. I want to see it. I think it'd be good for the series. Uh, but if he doesn't, well, then he doesn't. It just happens. So, um, and then as far as Baggett goes, Baggett was pretty on fire in qualifying yesterday. Uh, but just bad luck in the motos. First turn crash, um, first moto, second moto, went down in the rollers on the first lap. Um, just, just couldn't get it couldn't get it together you know um and it just goes with the rest of the season we thought he was going to be good he struggled with the bike so far and who knows maybe by the time we get to the midway point he picks it up but at that point it could be too little too late if if Eli's got almost 50 points on Marv and who knows how much he's got on Baggett so um so yeah, so basically top five rundown from yesterday. Overall, Tomac 2-1, Marv 1-2, Barsha went 3-5 for third, Kenny went 7-3 for fourth, and then maybe the surprise, depends who you are, of the day, Hill goes 4-6. Now I think, I think those numbers were a little inflated for Hill, to be really honest with you. I know Justin was texting in the group chat and was quite impressed with it, um, but I thought, that, I thought it was a little inflated. Um, I mean, the first first moto you had Baggett, Kenny, Pike, and Phil all down in the first corner and you know Kenny and Baggett especially the way Baggett was riding yesterday definitely would have been ahead of him um and then you had um Phil and Pike which is kind of where I feel like he's battling who he will be battling with and if they get a start like you know with him is he going to get by him? Maybe, maybe not. You know, it, it, it wasn't to me an overly impressive day. Um, it was just kind of like, well, he's better on a 450 than he is on a 250 because that's what he wants to ride. So I don't know. I don't, we'll see. I, he's, I, in my opinion, he's never going to be an outdoor guy anyway. He's never going to put the work or want to put in the time to do it. Um, so Supercross is going to be the thing to see what he does. And I know he won that heat race in Tampa and everybody's like, Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. But now I'm still not convinced that that kind of, I think that had a little bit of luck and a little bit of, you know, Oh, this is my first time going with that kind of stuff that helped him out. I think w over the course of a season, you're going to see flashes, but that's it. Um, so yeah. 
So anyway, uh, other honorable mention, uh, Henry Miller was back, goes 2017 for 21st overall. Uh, so I'm sure he'll build on that. Maybe he'll hole shot Spring Creek this year and not tuck the front end in the first corner. That would be cool. Um, and like I said, Tomac still got a 28 point lead over Marv. So nice and comfy here over a whole moto. So if he does DNF a moto for some reason, mechanical or something, he's not out of it yet. So, uh, so yeah, so that pretty much is all my thoughts on the 450. Again, I wish Justin was here. So I had somebody to bounce stuff off of, but he's not. So feel free to comment below. I comment back a couple days later. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on 450s. Uh, we'll move on to the 250s. Okay, 250s. 250s were the day of the return. So we had Mitchell Harrison, Cameron McAdoo, and Dylan Ferrandez all coming back in the 250 class today from injuries. Um, and let's face it, it was uh, not a great day for any of them really other than McAdoo. Uh, or I'm sorry, other than Ferrandez uh, in that second moto. Um, so first moto, Highlights here basically uh, Enzo Lopes the rookie on the JGR bike actually top three start But I mean faded like the first two laps like a cheap prom dress So um, but it, at least it was a good start. He was up front. We were talking about him He's he's had a pretty solid year as far as rookies go um, but Nothing nothing super special that we're gonna you know harp on um, And then after that you had the uh, the Cooper Martin battle. So this uh, this Cooper kid uh, wow. I impressive, uh, to say the least. Whole shots, both motos yesterday, actually. Um, and in the first moto, whole shots leads for a long time, uh, till J-Mart finally catches and passes him, and then AP gets him too. Um, but, uh, or actually, I think AP got him first, and then J-Mart got him. Um, but wow, what a, uh, what a battle. I mean, he's, he is brewing confidence of I'm going to run up front and I'm going to hold these guys off as long as I can and then I'm going to follow them and he says he said that over and over again he said it on he did the best post race show ever with uh with we yesterday and continued to say that of hey I'm my goal is just to get a good start run up front with those guys and stay up front as long as I possibly can so um so he did that, and they battled for a long time. I couldn't even tell you how long. It was five, six, seven laps they battled for until Martin finally got him. Um, but AP did what we kind of think AP is capable of doing, which was, uh, you know, gets a decent start, makes some moves into first, especially in the deep ruts, and is gone. Um, and it's good to see AP actually doing something like that uh, because there's been a lot of hype around this kid. And we all thought he was going to do this for a long time, and he hasn't. So the fact that he's now actually doing what we all thought he was going to, which was win, especially outdoors here, is is cool to see. Um, and then also in the first moto, uh, March Banks went down hard in that kind of turning rhythm lane. And uh, I don't know what's wrong with him. I haven't looked it up yet to see, but he was, he was hurting. Something in the leg area. Uh, he was laying there. He was visibly in pain had his helmet off threw his helmet down the hill i mean it was it was a whole thing so uh yeah and then the uh as far as the 250 second moto went that was a battle of attrition uh if you could stay upright and stay on your bike and your bike would stay under you uh you did you could do well so um first one was sexton's bike blows up smoking fire extinguishers i i don't know exactly what happened something electrical but whatever uh so there's that then next thing you see savachi has crashed out and got up and tried to ride and couldn't ended up finishing i think like 39th or something 34th something like that way in the back um then uh next thing you have uh jordan bailey huge crash over it was one of the triples doubles i don't remember but a huge crash just got ejected off the front bike tracked him down but he actually got kind of lucky because the jump was so big and the way the bike bounced it actually bounced and kind of flipped over him um but again huge crash uh then martin's bike electrical issues as he's out front leading and uh so he's done for the day um so like i said just a a war of attrition uh in that second moto and then you had forkner 
<laughs> and Forkner battled with every single star Yamaha rider that there was. It was AP first, and then it was uh, uh, then it was the Cooper kid, and then it was Ferrandez, and it was dude, it was a battle. It was a battle all the way around. He didn't even know who he was battling. He said it in the press conference at the end, uh, but he battled with all of them. Uh, but at the end, so AP goes 1-1 on the day, and he goes from 8 points down to 5 points up on J- or I'm sorry, he goes from 8 points down to 20 points up on J-Mart, uh, since J-Mart had that DNF, that second moto, and now has a pretty comfy 20-point lead here um, going into Muddy Creek, which is a good track for him, um, and is just in control of this at this point, which is a little bit of a shock because we all thought J-Mart was going to kind of dominate here after Osborne went out. Um, and in fact, he said, he said yesterday in his interview when they were asking him about his bike, he said, well, I don't know, it's bike problems, like whatever, we'll deal with it and I'll just have to dominate the rest of the races. And I'm like, oh, that's not good for everyone. If he if he's out on a mission to dominate, it's not good. It's not good at all. Um, so anyway, um, Forkner, though, goes 4-2 uh, for second overall. Um, again, him and Ferrandez right down to the end of the moto there, that second moto. In fact, cross the line just like... Um, so, yeah, good good day for him. It's good to see him finally up there. Thank God that the star device didn't unhook and hit him in the chest and what. Anyway, uh, and then the Cooper kid, man, he went 3-4, uh, third overall. Just, again, podium, 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 podium. I think he's like third or fourth in points. Um, and then the best coming back here, Frenchie, 8-3. Dylan Fernandez, 8-3 for fourth overall. Good comeback day for him considering he was hyped pretty hard for outdoors and then last year crashed out at uh, um, Hangtown, was out for a few rounds. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, it was a lot. So... Uh, um, and then you have Hampshire rounds out the top five, goes 7-7, seven, seven, and I still think he's the biggest waste of money as far as Geico goes for signings because he just doesn't do, I mean, he won that GP last year, but when it comes to anything that really matters, like, he just doesn't, he doesn't do anything outdoors, he doesn't do anything indoors, um, yeah, I don't know. That's a whole nother bag of worms to open. Uh, but overall, yeah, the, uh, the 250 class was pretty exciting yesterday, especially the second moto there. Like I said, with everything that happened, um, my heart hurts a little bit for Sexton having those bike issues because he's been struggling all year. He hasn't got the starts, and we thought after the way his Supercross season went, okay, he's going to come outdoors, and he's going to do well, and he hasn't done well yet. So we're still waiting maybe maybe next week, maybe in the sand, but I don't know how good he is in the sand, and if not, well, maybe when we get to Redbud because we all know he's good at Redbud. He rode there a lot as an amateur, so... I don't know, we'll just wait and see, um, but either way, it actually is shaping up to be a pretty interesting outdoor season here, which is good, so uh, we'll see running into Muddy Creek next week. Now, as far as Muddy Creek predictions go next week, uh, 250 class, I think, um, God, I really think it's going to be a battle between AP and J-Mart up front, and I think if J-Mart's bike stays under him, I think J-Mart wins. I'm not sure if it's a 2-1, I'm not sure if it's a 1-1, one, one, um, but I think he wins. And as far as the 450s go, um, you know, that's another that's another tight, sticky kind of technical track that I think is going to serve Marv well. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if Marv and Eli split again next weekend, to be real honest with you. I think, I really think some of these other guys like Baggett and Kenny can get a win if they get a start and are up there. You know, Kenny obviously every week he's building a little bit, um, but uh, yeah, I don't, God, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, but but that's what I think. I think Marvin and Eli split wins next week again, and uh, we then we then we're on. So that's pretty much my thoughts. That's what I could come up with without having anybody else to bounce ideas off of here. So, uh, yeah, this has been another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show presented by TLR Coatings. Make sure to check them out for all your powder coating needs. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook. Follow, us on, follow me on Instagram. Please, please, please subscribe to the channel. And like I said, there's links down below for a whole bunch of different ways to help support us through Amazon, Patreon, T-shirt, 
shots through Teespring, everything like that. And we will be back next week, hopefully not so low in studio, to wrap up Muddy Creep. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.